What's going on YouTube? So if you took a look at the thumbnail, you saw my dirty little secret. Yes, I am a minimalist and that was my embarrassing shed. <laughs> Everything that you've seen on this channel thus far, the empty closets, um, the empty drawers, it's all true. I don't have a lot of stuff. But tools, <laughs> tools and solar generators are a little bit of a problem for me. So I will be organizing that today. It's going to take me all day, but I just wanted to be honest with you all and say like, even as a minimalist, you know, we're, we're not perfect. We like to put on YouTube. Oh yeah. Everything's totally minimal. Like I don't own any stuff, but like, yeah, my shed is like, uh, if, if I'm calling myself a minimalist, that would be my one non-minimalist part. So today I just want to go over a few things of how I got started with minimalism and I want to give you like some pointers that will make your house so much less cluttered just by going over these few different things and, and where I started and what makes the most biggest impact in uh, minimalizing and min minimalizing and making your house look a little bit more sparse. So the first thing is that I went, the very first thing that I went through is right below me and that is my silverware drawer. I had like 20 forks, 10 knives, 18 spoons and all this other stuff. And then the cooking utensils, like the spatulas, the, the long spoons, the things that beat eggs and, and the ice cream scoopers and stuff like that. So that's the first thing that I started. And when I got rid of all that extra stuff, it gave me sort of like the motivation to start with the rest. So don't overwhelm yourself. Start with one drawer, one drawer. And remember, your stove only has four burners. So when it comes to pots and pans, you can only use four at a time. So you don't need, you know, two or four giant pots and then you, you don't need 18 uh, sauce. I don't know. You, you just, you don't need as much as you think. You're good with one frying pan, one saucepan, I don't even know what to call the different types of pans because we didn't grow up that way, <laughs> but you really only need one set. Okay. And then you need like your glassware for cooking cakes and pies and stuff like that. When it comes to, wow, this is my plates and, and, and bowls. That's not, I have, I have four plates in the fridge, which, um, I cook my meals four days at a time and I just cooked. So those that's, that's all I've got. That's I've got, I actually have three bowls and then four of those weird plate things that aren't really plates. And then I've got four normal plates. Um, so that is number one, just start with one drawer, work your way through the drawers. And then once you work your th way through the drawers, then go through the cabinets and we all have expired food in our cabinets. It's time to let it go. And then I'm going to bring you to the next thing that is going to make the most impact. All right. So the next one is some of y'all might hate me is books. So I used to have hundreds of books that weighed hundreds of pounds and I brought it down to my absolute favorite. Please don't judge me based on my book choices, but these are the ones that I have. These are the ones that I love. There's a whopping seven of them that I read time time and time again, over and over, all the time. Those are the big things, okay? Books, if you take down as many books as I did, it probably saved this entire cabinet space, would have been full of books, and then it would have trickled on down into these cabinets, and it, it would have been a mess. So go through your books and keep only the ones that you think that are, you are going to reread time and time again. The, then after you go after your books, go after the tchotchkes. That's things like this, tchotchkes, you know, stuff that has no, va well, Simba's not a tchotchke, but has no value, it, but, you know, I've got some weird little crystals in there, like just random stuff. Now, this is all I have left. And these, 
I've got to be honest with you, these things aren't even important to me. I was just trying to find stuff to fill the shelves. And, and this is all I own, and they don't, aside from Simba, my dog's ashes, these things don't mean anything to me. They're just filling up space so I don't look, so people don't think I look weird, like have a weird house. So if I were to, you know, these glass things and these crystals, these were my mom's things, and they're like paperweight things that she bought at yard sales and stuff. And she had, oh my gosh, she had a bookshelf full, like four stories, four tiers of bookshelves that were like eight feet tall. It went all the way to the ceiling. And I'm not talking like a couple on a shelf like this. I'm talking the entire shelves were completely full back to front of these glass balls. And these were just the ones I kept that I liked the most. So tchotchkes, little precious moments figurines, um, little, you know, cactus cookie cutter things, or just Barbie dolls, stuff that has no monetary value. And I don't know, if you like to look at Barbie dolls as an adult, um, yeah, take a picture of it and put it on your computer and use it as a background. There you go. That's number two. All right, so number three is going to be your clothing. So we wear 20% of our clothing 80% of the time. It's time to get rid of the stuff that has holes in it, the stuff that doesn't fit properly, the stuff that is not flattering to your figure. It is, it's time to get rid of the six extra coats and 10 extra hoodies that you have that you never wear and you keep just in case, or maybe you keep it because you spent money on it and you'll feel guilty if you get rid of it, let it go. Stuff you haven't worn in years, let it go. It's time. You're not gonna wear it again. Chances are you're likely not going to fit into that small size again. And if you are, your body may have changed and you know whatever you purchase is no longer in style. So it's, you know, it's probably better to purchase something new. Not a lot, just, you know, get rid of 10 pairs of jeans and replace them with one really good fitting pair. Get rid of those 10 t-shirts 10 and replace them with two or three that you really, really like. Not even replace, just maybe you have three that you really, really like and you've got seven extras that you can't use. Maybe you've got a million different pajama pants and you know, some are for winter, some are for summer. I like the shorts, I like the long pants. It's time to pick and choose and just use, you know, keep a few of them. It's, it's time to, it's time. I'm telling you, it's time to let go. It's time to let go. It's okay to let go. It's okay. All right, the next thing that I would say to get rid of is extra bedding. Now I'm not talking about like extra beds, but we all have like, I used to have this problem. <laughs> I liked the, the easiest and cheapest way to change up the design of any given room is by changing up the bedding and the pillows. You know, you go from white with this plaid and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna go with a soft floral um, and then, um, but then you put in the soft floor and you don't like it. So you're like, you know, I'm going to really switch it up and I'm going to change it to like green. And then you put in the green and you're like, ooh, the walls don't really go with the green. So you paint the walls. And, you know, we all like to have like, I used to, I used to have like six different sets for one bed. <laughs> like six sets for one bed. And, and then I got it down to two and I justified the two. I was like, well, well, I'm not using it. Like when this set is being washed, I'll use this set and then um, I'll, I'll do like a rotating thing. So two sets. Um, but washing a set of sheets and blankets takes about two hours. So, you know, if you, if you just use your, you know, you take it off when you get home from work at five at night, you put it in the washer, you put it in the dryer, and unless you're going to bed at seven, you know, it's gonna be ready by bedtime. So I have gone down to one, what did I just say? One sheet set uh, per room. And 
here's a way also to save space. Instead of having 20 different comforters, duvets, duvet covers are cheaper than comforter sets. Um, and they change up the entire look of your bed and they only take up the amount of space that a sheet does or two sheets, I should say. And what, here's another thing that you can do to save space is get those vacuum bags. They're like, you can get like a set of 10 for like $20. But get those big vacuum bags where you just put the vacuum suction on it and it sucks all the air out. Um, it'll take your two or three different bedroom sets and make it look like a pillowcase. It's going to be so tiny. And then those are super easy to store. So that's something that will make it look a lot less cluttered in your closets as well. Um, and I guess if to, to move back on the last point, if you're not willing to get rid of your clothes, like at all, the one thing that you can do is, like I said, get those, buy those vacuum seal bags. I'll, I'll leave a link in the, like an Amazon affiliate link down in the description box below for just random, the vacuum bags that I'm talking about, but it really will condense a lot. And if you're running out of room in your closet and you have all these old clothes that you don't wear anymore, or you haven't worn in years, um, at least if you're not going to get rid of them, just put them in the vacuum bags and put them in a box and put them up on a shelf, they'll be out, out of the way, and it'll give you a lot more room in your bedroom. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, I apologize for the bad lighting on this one, but there's not really a lot I can do. So the last one is something that drives me insane. What are these called, couch pillows? Couch pillows, okay, I get it. You want to decorate your couch, that is okay. Having one on each side is cool, but I see people, I have a friend who is on YouTube, who you know who you are. I've made fun of you <laughs> and I showed you the video on my Patreon. I love you, but when you come to somebody's house and they've got back, they've got back seat cushions and they have just pillows all over their couches, everywhere, so much that you, your big butt or my big butt has to move pillows in order to be able to sit down because there's so many pillows. Why even have a couch? Just have a stack of pillows. Like seriously, pillows are cool for decor, but a lot of people I see go totally, totally overboard on pillow overkill. All right, it's not, it, it doesn't make your place look better. It just makes it look really cluttered, like super cluttered. So, uh, yeah, it's just super cluttered. Please, this is a pet peeve of mine. Let go of like, not all the pillows, Let keep a couple, but, but you know, two or three, maybe even, even four, maybe even four. You can go for four, I'll, I'll give you four pillows. It's gonna look great on your sofa. Okay, it's gonna add some prestigious quality. It's gonna be amazing. It's totally impractical. Nobody uses them <laughs> and they're just there for decoration. So don't go overboard with them. It drives people nuts. All right. I think that that's all I've got. Those are the biggest ones that I would say. I've got another one. All right, the last one is a phenomenon that I was also victim to. And that is the laundry area. Now, look, I, I don't know how I did it. I don't know how it accumulated, but it happens. Most people I see have like 10 different laundry soaps, fabric softeners, stain removers, um, dryer throw thingies that I can't think of. Look, we, we, we all want clean clothes, <laughs> okay? But we've gone so over the top. We use way too much soap, way too many products. It's all horrible for the environment. People have allergies, people are developing allergies. People have allergies to these things. They're not good. Okay, so, and then you run out of space. So you're like, I have an idea. I'll build shelves. So if I build shelves, I'll have more space down here and I can just move everything up. So you move everything up. And then you have so much stuff on the shelves that you start bringing it down again. And you're like, I'm gonna build another shelf. I'm gonna have three shelves instead of two. You put up three and then it just gets full again. And I don't know how this happens. All you need to do laundry is laundry soap. And sometimes you don't even need laundry soap. 
You can use laundry soap once every three loads, depending on your job. But I mean, the, I, I have a whole laundry video and you'll understand that the agitation cycle is what does the majority of the cleaning and the soap. All it really does is leave residue on your clothes because people use too much and blah, 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 blah. Okay, you can go and check out that video. I'll, I'll try and leave a link at the end of this video. But seriously, folks, you don't need, you know, use it, don't let it go to waste, but stop buying more, stop. You don't need 20, you don't need 30, you don't need 40. People's laundry rooms are insane. All right, folks, that is the best way to start on your minimalism journey. Those are the things that I would look for. Also, any area rugs. Um, sorry, I couldn't do an example because I only have one rug in the house. And that's only so Rocky can uh, get up on the couch. But uh, area rugs are a big one. You know, some people have way too many rugs. But if you get rid of rugs, it does make it a lot more sparse in your house. Um, you can, you can, it starts echoing in the house a lot better and stuff like that. I like echoing sounds. Echo! Echo! Hi! Come here. Okay, I'm not gonna, do you wanna look at the camera? No, you just wanna give me, I love you. All right, folks, do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out.